Good morning, good morning. Oh, it's gonna be it. Oh, what am I doing? That's it. That's what I want. My squeaky wind wipers. Oh, I'm gonna have to go the fast way. I'm gonna have to go the fast way for the first few weeks, next few weeks, because. Uh, because they're doing uh, all sorts of road works and electrical connection works and stuff down that other road, which is a right pain still. They've chosen uh, July and August to do it. The schools, they've started it now, the schools are broken up, you know. Anyway, how are you, all right? Good, good. You probably noticed I've posted quite a few videos lately. I do get, occasionally I get this mention. They say like, you know, you post a few videos and then you don't post anything for weeks and then you post another one and then you don't post anything for weeks and I do get it because I don't you know my favorite content creators who are all you know sort of monetized or their content will put out one video a day or something or a couple of videos a week you know so they know they want you to get into the habit of sort of thinking oh it's early morning so the you know so and so from India will have posted a video or it's it's the evening so so and so from America will probably have posted a video so but you know as I've said before I'm not really you know I tend to uh, do these as and when I get an idea if I basically what I do is I get in the car and I think have I got an, an idea a coherent cogent idea to talk about for about 20 minutes and if I have then I do and if I haven't then I don't I just I just listen to the radio plus it depends what car I'm in obviously with this car you get the two cameras in the the red car you only get the uh, the phone so anyway I hope you're well what I was going to talk today was about treating children because um, we well, had a patient of mine from long long time ago uh, she came to see me uh, privately and then she fell on hard times and she came and she said to me look you know I uh, unfortunately I can't uh, afford to carry on but rest assured as soon as we get the finances sorted out and I've got some more money again I'll be coming back so just to let you know it's nothing personal so <clears throat> I'm not even sure it wasn't because she was pregnant Anyway, there's some reason why uh, she was going to take a break. And I said to her, look, you know, we get on quite well and, you know, we don't, I've got the facility to do the odd bit of pro bono work. This was, this is even many years ago. And uh, so I said, look, I'll, I'll carry on treating you. Anyway, you certainly need your check up that. So, um, so we carried on and then when I moved surgeries and then she uh, found out where I was working and she moved surgeries and, and so anyway long story short I've been treating her for a long time and then uh, she moved to France <laughs> and not just France you know I mean like the Loire I mean a long way away uh, so anyway you know you we all get these phone calls you know you haven't seen me for a while but I'm going to be back in the UK is there any chance you can just have a look at my teeth you know I've got X problem or Y problem let's just get accelerated up to cruising speed four factor six so so I said yeah okay so now she come come she's got a daughter that lives in the UK so she's come over from France with her husband, they pop in, have a check up. They both lost some teeth. He's lost a front tooth. She's lost a back tooth. And so a couple of Maryland bridges are doable in the time available. And, uh, and you know, and there's usually inevitably some other stuff. But then she said, well, my daughter's like having trouble getting in on the NHS. Could you see her and could you see my grandchildren? So I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm always, you know, happy. 
to see friends of friends. I'd rather see, I'd rather see friends of friends or relatives of friends than uh, new patients, to be honest, because they're a bit of a dodgy uh, thing, aren't they? So, anyway, she said, um, look, she said, here's how we'll do it. Well, I'll get in the chair and you do like a pretend, a pretend checkup on me, just to show them what they're gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. And then they'll get in the chair and then you can do a checkup on them. And I said to her, and actually that's the worst way to do it, based on nearly 50 years experience, because that all that'll happen is that she'll end up having two checkups and uh, the children will then not climb in the chair. <laughs> okay. That's how that that's how that plays out. So the way we do it, and I'll, you know, I mean, it was just something I invented on the spur of the moment at the time, but I'm happy to share with you when you're treating children, even small children, and it works even better if there's two of them or three of them or something. And what you do is you get um, mum, mum to sit in the chair, and then you lean her back, and then you hold the mirror out and say, right now, I need someone to pretend to be the dentist and have a look at mum's teeth and of course the opportunity to play at being a proper dentist is irresistible to children they're thinking oh this is all a bit weird and then all of a sudden they're thinking oh no it's it's playtime we're going to play dentists so uh, so then what you do is you get the child to uh, just stick the mirror in the mother's mouth hopefully not too far down their throat and say look you know can you see any black dots because we're looking for black dots you know and usually they sort of just muck about and you give them like, a minute or so just to have a little look around and you can adjust the light so that they can see in there and make sure you get the chair low enough so that they can reach you know and the mum funnily enough usually thinks this is highly hilarious having a child poke around in the mouth with a mirror so uh uh, okay. I suppose that was a bit cheeky, because there aren't two lanes there really till the end. But um, no, um, and then and then what you do right now, and then you say right now you can be the patient, someone else can be the dentist, right? And so child one then gets in the chair, and child two inspect child one's teeth. When well, child one and child two I think this is highly hilarious. So, and then, but the trick is, obviously, while child two is looking in child one's mouth, you're standing there with secret mirror number two to, uh, after about 15 seconds, to say, don't forget to look over this side, and then you can pull their cheeks out, you know, and child one by this time doesn't mind because they've got half a dozen mirrors in their mouth, and they're like, uh, you know, all you need to do is have a quick look. Now, what you're looking for is really not, not a, you know, a massively detailed chart at this point because this, we're talking about possibly this child's first visit to the dentist. So all the, you know, having got them in the chair with their mouth open and having a checkup is, is a good, you know, that's a big win for day one. Uh, but what you're looking at is what is the general state of the teeth? You know, are they well brushed? Are they, uh, uh, you know, is there evidence of decay, in the, particularly in the D's and the E's, or between the D's and the E's and that sort of thing, or in the clues of the sixes or whatever. And um, you don't have to do everything on day one, all right? So don't uh, sort of get too aggravated about it all. Parents only wants to know if, you know, does little so-and-so need any fillings? Well, you know, I always say to the parents, really, you know, the days when we used to restore every single baby tooth had gone. And that's because the days of working for fee for item, where you used to get a fee for filling baby teeth had gone. Um, and also you have to remember that behind every phobic adult, there's a child that was made phobic by some hairy chested dentist insisting that they sit still, shut up and, and receive a load of pain. So really, uh, the, the whole objective of uh, 
children's dentistry is to make sure that they have fun, that they have like a, a pleasant experience, and one ideally that you know they might want to come back and and do again. And we've we've demonstrated this on many occasions where we've done checkups along these lines and. Um, you know, and especially if you give them like a balloon and a sticker at the end, they say that was easy, wasn't it? Because they're very suggestible children. If you say to them that was easy, that was fun, wasn't it? Uh, come back in six months or whatever, and and we'll do it again. And perhaps you can be the nurse or something. Or if you've got if you've got three children, then one of them can be the nurse, helping with the mouthwash and everything. And you're really you, your job is just to stand well out out of the way, well back, you know, because you're less threatening if you're standing. <laughs> well away and the children are doing their own uh, play acting with one being the dentist one the patient one the nurse so so anyway so but that just illustrates the gulf between um, what the parents think would probably be the best approach and what actually is the best approach so the parents tend to, they tend to follow this sort of tell, show, do uh, thing, which is great for older children possibly, but um, for younger children it just doesn't work. And that's because they are not mentally far enough along to understand things like consequences, for example. They don't understand if they have a sweet that uh, a year down the line they might be sitting in the dentist chair having a filling. Yeah, you can't say to a young child, don't eat sweets because you'll get fillings. They honestly won't, or conceptually, just don't even understand what you're talking about. What they concentrate on is what they're doing now and what is coming up in the next five minutes. Not what's ne no, it's coming up in the next five years or five months. So all children need to hear is that uh, cakes, biscuits and sweets are bad for you. Uh, they give you black dots in your teeth. Uh, that's all. It's the parents you have to work on, I would say more. Uh, what, uh, you know, a quick, quick chat with the parent will give you a good idea as to the, um, the problems that you, you've got or you might have with the child. So uh, if you start saying to the parent, well, uh, now at this age it's a good idea to make sure they're uh, so far as possible on a sugar-free diet uh, no cakes biscuits and sweets fizzy drinks they're the four food groups that cause most of the trouble um, and if the parent says well you know they like their sweets but they do brush their teeth twice a day you're like <laughs> that 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 person is not listening to you are they they're opening like a dialogue with you they're like yeah well okay I, I hear what you say but actually, I've got a better idea. You know, I found a way around that. So then, you know, and then if you say, well, look, when they're in their late teens, early 20s, um, brushing is going to get more important. But at the moment, at the moment, it's not that big a deal, you know. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Because by the time they get their toothbrush working, the damage is already done. It's done in the first five or ten minutes, and they're not going to brush their teeth five or every five or ten minutes. And the parents will then look at you, and then the old cognitive dissonance starts to set in, because they're like, you know, they their entire life they have been told. I'll let him go. That they, they've been told that um, you know, brush your teeth twice a day keeps the dentist away, sort of thing. And there's you telling them that really they don't need to brush. So, and if they continue to resist, then you know you're going to have trouble. And the child is going to have trouble. Because you're going to have trouble with the parents, the child is going to have trouble with the parents. So you just have to make a mental note and a note on the notes to resume this battle at a future day, you know. Possibly when the children, child's got a couple of decayed sixes or something. And say, look, you know, I, I mentioned to you before, 
they need to be on a sugar-free diet. If you want them to go out with no fillings, then the sugar-free diet, so far as possible, okay? As well, let's go through it. Cakes, biscuits, sweets. Cakes, okay. And I'm not saying don't have a cake on your birthday. I might be saying don't eat the icing, but I'm not saying don't have a cake on your birthday. But cakes are very high in sugar. I'm the only one who's made a cake. Mary, Mary Berry knows that. Then biscuits. Uh, there's not much excuse really for biscuits, to be honest with you. Biscuits tend to be the more of a problem with um, uh, occupational occupational care is where you know they're working in an office environment or uh, I don't know the police are notoriously bad for eating crap um, and uh, they're having a cup of tea every hour or so and every cup of tea they have a biscuit with it so biscuits you can actually just have to say no to biscuits um, sweets really you know if you're going to eat sweets then you've you've abandoned all hope haven't you of uh, preventing yourself getting decay so really sweets if anyone's eating sweets then really you might as well say well look, I'll talk to you when you're you know, perhaps a bit more serious about keeping your teeth. Um, fizzy drinks are a funny thing because they never used to be part of it. They used to be cakes, biscuits and sweets. But I've had to add on fizzy drinks because um, of the erosion aspect of the carbonic acid in the, in the uh, drinks. Even if they're diet drinks, they still have carbon dioxide div um, dissolved in the water making carbonic acid so you get erosion. And also, um, Obviously the sugar aspect, which is for someone like who's quite into fizzy drinks, will develop a quite distinctive pattern of decay in their front teeth. That everyone will, uh, you know, who's seen it will recognize it. Oh, there we go, look, ambulance trying to get through. So I do add on fizzy drinks because again, there's no, you know, I mean, I love a peach tea as much as the next person, but really, and, and I really honestly didn't think that you could get by on just water and squash, but I'm coming to the conclusion that you probably can. Um, so, that's children. Now, children, as far as the treatment goes, we put obviously we put fluoride on the teeth. Although, personally, you know, I think that the studies that show that uh, putting fluoride on the teeth. I, I went to the um, National Institute for um, uh, what's it in? Uh, was it Manchester? And watched them sort of fudge about on this. What, what should you do to you know prevent decay? And the only people there were the representatives from the um, the manufacturers of the uh, varnish, for example. And 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 what do you know? Hey presto, uh, that was the recommendation. And that's because they had no research. Basically, National Institute of Clinical Excellence um, looks at all the papers, all the evidence, blah 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 blah. blah and then until they come to dentistry and then they realize that there's no evidence for anything, nothing. Nobody's interested in doing any either. So what they do is they, they, they sort of try and seize on one paper. <laughs> it's just the only paper that's acceptable really. And then they make their recommendations based on that. And that's really what happened with the fluoride varnish thing. That, and I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, but I suspect that, uh, you know, the fact that the rep there who manufactured it all had something to do with it. Directly or indirectly. And it certainly didn't do their sales any harm, did it? You know, to be the only to be recommended across the NHS, especially at a time when... Uh, the children's dentistry was out of favour and dentists didn't want to do really any children's dentistry. And then you had COVID where what you're going to do, you know, for children other than put fluoride varnish on their teeth. 
So fluoride varnish all of a sudden jumped to the top of it, what was being prescribed on the NHS. But then, you know, I mean, that's that's probably a moot point. You can put fluoride varnish on their teeth and then tell the parents that the their job really is to try and just jolly their children along until they're 10 or 11 and all their baby teeth fall out. Which sometimes is a long time, you know, if they're three and you're saying, well, these teeth have started going decayed and they've got to last until they're 10 or 11. Well, that's a big ask. Uh, but if they're on a sugar-free diet, actually, it's not a big ask. But because bearing in mind that the uh, roots dissolve earlier than that, so they're not really likely to give too much trouble after eight or nine, because they've lost all the pulps. Uh, but uh, but you know, the less treatment on children, the better, really. Palliative care only, I would say. Um, but and then, but if anyone's got you know so much trouble that they need to have a GA for extractions as a child, then that's I think that's tantamount to child abuse. But that's a whole other that's a whole other podcast, isn't it? You know, could go on about whether or not you know needing to have your children's teeth amputated is constitutes child neglect. Right, nice to talk to you. I'll try and upload this one today as well. You you are you lucky lucky people. All right, bye.